Hard water? Soft water? What the heck is the difference? And why is it so important? Let's dive in and find out. First, what the heck is water hardness? This is the concentration of dissolved minerals, mainly calcium, magnesium, and some other trace elements. This mineral content varies based on the geological composition of the water source, influenced by rocks like dolomite and limestone. In the US, you can generally assess tap water hardness using the United States Geological Survey or USGS website. However, for precise results, testing your aquarium water at home is advisable. Hardness can be categorized into general hardness or GH and carbonate hardness, alkalinity or KH, both of which are significant factors. General hardness or GH basically is a unit that quantifies the mineral salt concentrations in your aquarium water. To be more specific, this is the magnesium and calcium ions measured in degrees, or DGH, or parts per million, or ppm. For most freshwater fish tanks, a GH level of 4 to 8 DGH, or 70 to 140 ppm, is appropriate. However, this may vary depending on the species of fish, invertebrates, and plants in your tank. Carbonate hardness, or KH, reverses to the levels of carbonate and bicarbonate of water, and how it influences your water's buffering capacity against pH changes. Given that unstable water quality poses risks to fish, this parameter is very significant to determining your water hardness. Water pH levels naturally fluctuate within a certain range throughout the day, which is generally safe. However, rapid changes can pose risks. A higher KH means that water has a higher pH and greater pH stability. Conversely, tanks with low KH often have low pH levels and are prone to fluctuations. High kg levels can hinder pH adjustments, which may pose challenges when maintaining specific water conditions for a certain fish species. A carbonate hardness of around 3 dKH is considered safe, although many commercially bred aquarium fish can adapt to levels ranging from 1 to 10 dKH. So does water hardness really matter? Many aquatic plants and fish have evolved to live in different types of water around the world. The minerals that make water hard or soft are important for the health of the fish, but the amount varies between species. Many aquarium fish can adapt to water hardness, especially species that are captive bred, but to give them the ideal living conditions, it's still best to mimic the water conditions found in their natural habitat. Some species are very sensitive and would need specific requirements to thrive. A lot of fish species do well in slightly hard water, and many can adapt to even harder water parameters. Few species, like the African cichlid for example, will thrive in very hard water. Later on, you'll learn how to change your water hardness to suit your fish, but it might be easier to pick a fish to the kind of water that you already have. Water hardness impacts the ability of fish to regulate salt and water in their bodies. This is called osmoregulation. If they're unable to tolerate the water, they can become very stressed or even die. Okay, we've established that low KH allows your pH value to swing drastically, which can be stressful for your fish. The importance of carbonate hardness is the buffering capacity to maintain a stable pH level and environment for your pets. Next, we're talking general hardness. Since minerals are just as important to fish as they are to humans, as they help with bodily functions like growing and reproducing, we know that incorrect KH and GH can be detrimental for fish. But what about other tank mates like invertebrates and plants? Low GH can be very dangerous for aquarium invertebrates. Molting shrimp can encounter some problems, and snails have thin, weak shells. Very soft water is not ideal for aquarium plants, though high KH can cause some sensitivity to many plant species. Species like Vallisneria may have a preference for harder water, though. It's already basic knowledge that aquarists should regularly change your water, but testing your water is just as important to monitor its conditions. Unfortunately, pH testing is not enough you need to test your KH and GH as well. Low GH and KG often correlate to low pH levels. Tap water can be different, so it's really important to test both GH and KG since they don't correlate to the pH level. Process is pretty much the same as measuring any other water quality parameters like nitrates. Here's the 101 of testing your water hardness levels. First, strip tests. Strip tests are convenient and easy. Some brands introduced all-in-one kits that measure pH, GH, KH, nitrates, and nitrites. We recommend the API Test Strips. This brand is used in many pet stores and is readily available. To do this, simply dip the strip in your aquarium water and compare the color change on the strip with a guide on your kit to read the water conditions. Aquarists try to save money by cutting the strips in half, but check the package instructions to get more accurate results. Next up, Liquid Test Kits. These are very easy to use and more fun, honestly. 
These tests use droplets of colorful liquid to measure the GH, KH, and other water parameters. We also recommend the API Freshwater Master Test Kit here. This is the best one to get you started, as it includes all essentials and accurate testing. Okay, we're gonna go through the different categories, from very soft water all the way up to liquid rock. They are as follows. Very soft water is 0 to 4 dGH or 0 to 70 ppm. Your water has low levels of dissolved calcium and magnesium. It's not ideal for most plants and animals to live under these conditions. Up next is soft water, which is 4 to 8 dGH or 70 to 140 ppm. Most South American and Southeast Asian fish species thrive in this water condition. It's also ideal for many freshwater plant species. And after that, we have moderately hard water, which is 8 to 12 dGH or 140 to 210 ppm. This is the ideal and safe environment for most of the popular freshwater aquarium fish in the hobby. After that, we've got hard water, which is 12 to 18 dGH or 210 to 320 ppm. Fish like live bears are able to live in moderately hard water and can adapt to hard water conditions. And lastly, very hard water, 18 to 30 dGH or 320 to 530 ppm. This is also known as liquid rock as it contains high concentrations of minerals. A lot of freshwater fish may not do well in these types of water conditions, but the cichlids of Central America and East Africa would be able to thrive in very hard water. Here are some examples of species that would do well in different water hardness. Hard water fish species include live bears like guppies and mollies, goldfish, African cichlids, Central American cichlids, paradise fish, some killifish and rainbow fish, brackish water fish, and gobies. Softwater fish species include crystal shrimp, angelfish, tetras, rasboras, gourami, discus fish, and rams. Although it's feasible to change your water hardness, this may not be the ideal option for you. While water stability is important, adjusting levels introduces the risk of human error. Fluctuating water parameters can stress fish. For example, your water is naturally soft, but you like to keep some African cichlids, so you're gonna need to raise your water hardness. To do that, you can raise your GH and KG by adding calcium and magnesium salts to the water. But prior to doing this, ensure that you've tested your water hardness levels first. Here's some examples of increasing water hardness. Crushed coral or coral sand. Using crushed coral is a natural method to boost water hardness. Although achieving precise levels can be challenging, you can incorporate crushed coral directly into your substrate or place it in your aquarium filter for faster results, particularly when enclosed in a mesh bag with constant water flow. Next up, limestone rock. You can incorporate specific types of rocks into your hardscape to elevate your tank water hardness. Rocks such as the Texas Holy Rock, crafted from limestone, are widely admired for their aesthetics and effectiveness. These rocks are rich in calcium carbonate, and it can naturally enhance the pH, GH, and KG levels of your water gradually. Finally, commercial water hardeners. Specialized products like Seachem Equilibrium are designed for regulating water hardness levels. Likewise, products like Seachem Alkaline Buffer cater to KH management. These features offer precise control in adjusting your water hardness. Okay, we talked about increasing, now let's touch a little bit on decreasing your water hardness. This can be done by reducing magnesium and calcium concentrations in the water. Here are some examples on how to achieve just that. RODI water. While softening water can be very challenging, one approach involves starting with pure water and adding necessary minerals. Reverse osmosis deionized or RODI water is devoid of minerals and serves as a neutral base. This can be achieved at home with a reverse osmosis system, though it may require a small initial investment. Despite its extreme softness and neutral pH, this pure water is unsuitable for plants until it's remineralized with products like Seachem Equilibrium or blended with tap water. Next up, distilled water. Distilled water can serve the same purpose as reverse osmosis water. However, before it's suitable for fish keeping, you'll need to enhance its total hardness with magnesium and calcium carbonate compounds. An easy way to add minerals to distilled and RODI water is to blend it with tap water. Gradually add small amounts of tap water to pure water until reaching the desired hardness level. Without regular water changes and solely topping up your tank with tap water, your water will gradually harden over time. Ensure stability by testing your water regularly and using the correct mixture of distilled and tap water each time you refill your tank. Next, we have water softening pillows. Water softening pillows provide another convenient option as they're pretty simple to use. 
These pouches contain a resin that attracts and removes magnesium and calcium from the water. While this method offers less precise control, it's highly effective and particularly suitable for softwater fish such as tetras and angelfish. Another thing you can do to decrease your water hardness is adding peat moss. This lowers pH levels in fish tanks by releasing tannins, which darkens the water. While it's effective for recreating blackwater aquariums and slightly softening water, it's less effective for very hard water conditions. And finally, aquarium soils and driftwood. Aquarium soils such as ADA aquasoil can soften water pretty effectively, making them ideal for planted tanks. Additionally, driftwood, almond leaves, and other plant materials that release tannins will also slightly reduce pH and water hardness levels. And that's a wrap! If you like our video, be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. Plus, take a look at our blog for the full post, as it supports our efforts right here on this channel. Or, better yet, click on that video to the right. You know you want to.